Congressman Paul, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Nice to be with you. L let me start right away with your immigration policy. I would like to, to know what are you going to do with the 11 million undocumented immigrants in this country? What's your plan? <laughs> well, I'm going to call up Solomon and ask him for the wisdom of Solomon to deal with it. I, um, I do not believe it's possible, even if you wanted to, to round up 11 million people and send them off. I have no desire to do that, but it still leaves questions on, you know, exactly what you do. And uh, I think we should have secure borders. I don't think you should reward people for breaking the law. So I don't think people should be able to come easily and become easily, you know, citizens and, that, and get to vote and go on food stamps and get welfare. But in the same sense, somebody has been here and it's almost, you know, it is their country. I think there should be a program to bring them into the fold. And, you know, the green carding and let people come and but qualify. But I want it to be done, you know, uh, systematically. I think we need uh, more efficiency at our borders. Uh, and allow the people to come in, especially the people who will work and take care of themselves. Uh, but you, you just mentioned a program. What kind of program? Are you suggesting that there should be a, a program to legalize 11 million undocumented immigrants? Yeah, I don't think we should. Uh, I think legalizing is one thing, that, that they're not criminals and let people, you know, get a work permit or, you know, work within the system. But if, uh, if everybody who comes illegally is automatically given citizenship in a vote and uh, can apply for welfare, uh, that would be not a good, that would not be a good format because then we would have more of it. Uh, but uh, I, you ask about what we do with 11 million, and I would say you have to work out a program of assimilation, but you can't uh, just say borders don't count and people should be rewarded for breaking the law. I don't believe in that. Now, uh, as you know, children of undocumented immigrants who are born in the United States are U.S. citizens, just like you and me. Uh, do you like that idea? Is that okay? I just think the uh, mere fact of uh, stepping across the border and having a child, uh, and I'm an OB doctor, and I, and I had to take care of a lot of emergencies, deliveries, uh, and, and people came for the sole purpose of that. No, I don't think that should be automatic. I think that we should have more control of our borders. So, so you want to change the Constitution? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, it depends on how you interpret the Constitution. You know, under the jurisdiction is the big issue there, and that's why it's so so, so often debated. You know, what does under the jurisdiction mean? If you're if you're illegal, you might not be considered under the jurisdiction of the U.S. government. Uh, Congressman, so so if if you are not for immigration reform, if you um, do not agree with the with the fact with the idea that the children of undocumented immigrants should become automatically U.S. citizens. How are you going to get 35 percent of the Hispanic vote if, if you become the Republican candidate? I mean, it would be almost impossible, as you know. Well, most Hispanic voters uh, well, don't agree with you. For me to think that uh, I have to have a different message uh, for Hispanics than I do for other people, I think is unnecessary. I think uh, they, that Hispanics have uh, as much interest in freedom as everybody else. So to say that I have to kowtow in a sense of saying, well, the only way you can get a vote for any special group, uh, you know, is by giving special privileges. I don't want to punish anybody because they belong to a group, but then nobody should get a special privilege either. Uh, talking about foreign policy, let me ask you about Mexico. As you know, um, in the last uh, four or five years, more than 40,000 people have died. President Felipe Calderón right. just denounced that most of those deaths could be attributed to arms being sold in the United States. Would you support any kind of restriction in the United States to prevent those arms American arms going to drug traffickers in Mexico? Well, you know, you know the scandal that's going on there. Some of that was deliberate, and, there, it's, uh, and the FBI was involved. That is a real scandal, and I think that is an outrage. But no, what goes into Mexico, Mexico has to deal with. Yeah, but why don't you want to limit the sale of arms in the United States that end up in the, in the hands of Mexican drug traffickers? What's wrong with that idea? Well, if, if, if Mexico doesn't want them down there, what I want to do is restrict our government participation in that. But I don't want somebody to come and restricting the right of an individual in this country to defend themselves and own a gun. Now, if it gets into Mexico, uh, it, 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 Mexico has a lot of responsibility there, too, uh, for that. But when our government participates in it, then I'm with you on what you're implying, that we have to do something about it. And that's where most of the corruption is. But you can't 
can't deal with that problem if you don't want to even talk about the drug war. That's where the, that's where the criminality is and the corruption is, and that's where the gang wars are. It's, it's over the drugs that really we have to deal with. Just one last question. Should we talk to dictators? Should we talk to Ahmadinejad, to Fidel Castro, to Hugo Chavez? Is that a good policy? Well, why not? I mean, uh, didn't didn't we uh, talk to Khrushchev and uh, and all the Soviet leaders? How could any any regime be more ruthless than the Soviets and the Chinese? And we talked to them. So we should talk to people. Our problem is, you take somebody like Castro in Cuba. We haven't traded with him. We should have been talking to him and trading with him and for a long, a long time ago. The Cold War is over and done with. I mean, we don't have a very good record as Americans for picking the right dictators. We deal with dictators all the time, but only when they obey us. As long as they obey us, then we give them money and we prop them up. And as soon as they cross ways with us, then we start bombing and de getting rid of those dictators. I don't like that at all. And, and uh, I have two more questions about the presidential race here in the United States. Do you think that the movement to bring Governor Chris Christie to run for president, is that a sign of dissatisfaction with all the Republicans running for president? No, that vote just gets diluted. So a new person come in like Christie won't affect my supporters because my voters and my supporters are much more stronger on the issue of personal liberty and peace and prosperity, and they understand exactly what I'm talking about. And, and then finally, many Hispanics uh, have the impression that Republicans are not really interested in saving the economy or cooperating with President Barack Obama, but their sole interest, they tell me, is, is to beat President Barack Obama next year. What's your take on this? Well, we're, you know, that's what Democrats are there for, to, to beat the Republicans, and the Republicans are generally there to, to, beat the, uh, to beat the Democrats. As much as they fight and fume, they're only after power. You put them in, and they do the same old things. Obama ended up doing the same thing that Bush did. He was going to stop the wars, and look at what we ended up with. So he didn't live up to his, up to his promises to his own base, the liberals who put him in. And, you know, he, he hasn't really performed very well. But the Republicans, when they get in, they act like Democrats, and they promote, uh, you know, big government spending and all the debt. And that's why people are so disgusted in this country, and that's why the Tea Party movement is so strong, because they're tired of politics as usual. Yeah, can, can you tell us for sure that the Tea Party is not anti-immigrant? I can't tell you a thing about it because it's uh, sort of all over the place. Uh, at one time, uh, the Tea Party was started with, uh, uh, with what we were doing four years ago, and they were very anti-war, anti-Federal Reserve, federal, uh, federal Reserve, and they weren't anti-immigrant. But masses of number of people came in and sort of co-opted, you know, the system, and they tried to change the message. And nobody has control of the Tea Party movement, except for the fact that most of them are just happy, unhappy with the status quo, and they're unhappy with being lied to by so many politicians in this country. Congressman, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.